my name is Serge Berger, and I'm the founder of thestudytrader.com. I think you uh, made a great choice to attend this webinar today. Um, what I do is I help traders and active investors reach a level of consistent profitability that they never thought possible. Did you know that the reason why most traders are not making money is because they actually overcomplicate things? That's right. I can tell you that for the for the most part, the vast majority of people make things much too complicated. So today, what I'm going to show you guys is a highly profitable three-pronged trading approach that has not only uh, made me a ton of money over the years, but has also already allowed hundreds of traders just like you to live a life of financial freedom by reaching consistent uh, profitability. How would you like to be able to get up in the morning and not care which direction the market is heading because you know you have a simple, trustworthy, and repeatable process that consistently keeps you on the right side of the market. Furthermore, how would you like to be able to do this, say, from your beach side hotel room in Hawaii or your slope side hotel room in Eops? Well, that sounds a little bit uh, uh, silly almost, but it's a very realistic lifestyle to have if you learn to follow this straightforward three-pronged trading approach that I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, financial freedom is, is really what most traders somehow, uh, to some extent, aspire to. And my three-prong trading approach has allowed me to live a wonderful lifestyle where I spend part of the year uh, here in Florida and the other part in Switzerland. I think success as a trader really isn't that difficult. And with the approach that I'm going to show you guys today, everyone can do this. So what we're going to talk about today is the one candlestick pattern that is literally going to change your game. All right. So a uh, little bit about myself, I've been very fortunate uh, throughout my career to be able to work uh, both on the buy side and on the sell side, places like JP Morgan, and that has allowed me not only to work with some of the best traders and investors uh, in the world, but it's also allowed me to see different asset classes and different styles. And um, you know, from equities to fixed income to uh, derivatives and, and, uh, and even uh, in credit markets. I've been able to work uh, in, in many different asset classes, and now I'm fortunate enough to be able to pass this knowledge on to the folks that I manage money for, and of course, uh, my uh, my advisory subscription-based uh, folks and the broader audience, such as yourself. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, I think, uh, as I said before, keeping it simple is very important. Uh, uh, and again, trading and investing does not have to be complicated. Most traders and investors overcomplicate things because really what they do is they look at too many conflicting data points. And that's a really crucial point to make. Most people look at too many conflicting data points. Write that down. We have got to be able to eliminate the noise at this day and age where we you know, live in the information age uh, where we have Twitter and blogs and emails and text messages and WhatsApps and whatever else comes through, um, you know, we have to be able to eliminate that noise. And so the most straightforward our process is, the easiest it's going to be for us to be able to stick with it and to cut out that noise. Really, really important. The very best professionals uh, that I have worked with throughout my career have a very simple but a repeatable process. And I'll repeat that. The very best professionals, uh, traders, have a sim simple but repeatable process, and I can't emphasize how important that is. Um, what I'm going to show you guys today is a highly effective and repeatable three-prong trading approach that everyone can do, and I think that by the time we're through this presentation, uh, it's literally going to change the way you look at financial markets. That might be a bold statement to make, but I've seen so many people have an, an unbelievable aha moment in this presentation that I'm very excited to be able to share this with you guys today. Okay, before we do that, real quickly, I want to do a bit of an exercise, and um, you can answer this either yourself or if you feel uh, you, you want to share it with everyone, you can type this in. But uh, the question is, you know, where do you fit? And I think it's important to, as traders and investors, in general in life, you want to be able to reevaluate and be honest with yourselves of where we are. So I've divided these three levels that I think most people somehow fit into. Um, so stage number one uh, is sort of the beginning stage. You're reading and studying, but you've never actually sort of pulled a, a trigger to a trade. 
second stage, you've done this for a few years, but you're still struggling with, you know, with what you're doing. Uh, you're going through the initial emotions of fear and greed. Uh, and then the third one is where I think a lot of people fit into is where they've done this for a few years, but they're still losing money in some way or another. And, um, you know, they're really trying to figure out what their style is. So uh, that's sort of the, the three stages I think people fit into. Uh, and, uh, again, I'm thinking most of you guys uh, fit into this in, in one form or another. So uh, that is that little exercise I want to do. In terms of the agenda, real quick, what I'm going to show you guys today is why identifying investor mood and emotions is critical uh, for success as a trader. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to consistently find the highest probability uh, points to buy any given stock and next commodity or currency. And I'm going to tie all this together uh, to give you this blue, this amazing blueprint uh, to the three-prong trading and active investing approach. Um, as a bonus, finally, I will reveal my absolute favorite option strategy that you can implement right away to generate monthly income. So I hope you're excited. Let's do this. Okay, real quickly, um, this is not supposed to be a Candlesticks 101 class, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, the base here so you kind of know where I'm coming from. But I think from, for the most part, there are way too many Candlesticks out there to, folk, to learn them all. Um, there's only actually, if you look at it the way that I do, you'll see that there's really only a few that actually matter because they're all telling, for the most part, they're telling us the same thing. So we have to focus on the ones that actually work, and it's only a few of them actually matter. So real quick, the basics for the candlesticks is as such. You've got either essentially an, a, a down day, which is this candlestick here on the left with this black or the filled body, um, where you have an open, a lower close, but an intraday range that extends beyond the, uh, the open to close range, right? So you essentially have these four points, the open, the close, the low and the high. The opposite, of course, would be uh, an update, right? So you have essentially an, an open, a higher close, but an intraday range, again, that extends below the open to close range. Now, important to note is that these candlesticks, of course, can take place in any time frame. Today, I'm going to be focusing on a daily time frame. You can use these for five-minute charts, for 15-minute charts, for weekly charts, monthly charts, whatever. It doesn't matter but I'm going to be focusing on daily charts for today's presentation. It's the same application. So the most important part for these candlesticks is to figure out what's the relationship between, the, the, in this case, the daily high, low, open, and close. And that's really what makes the difference between these different candlesticks. The other thing about candlesticks is that they are very visual. Okay. It's a fact that uh, more than 60% of us have an easier time understanding things by um, seeing a series of pictures, right? And it starts with, you know, kids. If you think about kids, I think of my, my four-year-old daughter. She has an easier time understanding things through a series of pictures still than if I, give her an Excel, if I give her an Excel spreadsheet, right? And it's actually the same thing for most of us. And that's really where candlesticks come in very handy for us. It's very, very visual and it allows us to do risk management much easier. So candlesticks are much more visual than say bar or line charts. Is, is anyone for uh, by any chance using like a line charts to, to do trading in here today? If you're using line charts, like that's basically just like a, a simple line, right? Uh, that's good to plot say GDP or some other economic data point. Really bad for trading. So you're gonna get a lot out of this today if you are using uh, line charts. But basically, the uh, candlesticks are, are show us a clear visual representation of what's going on, not just in terms of price, but very importantly, again, I'll, again, I'll ask you to write this down, what candlesticks do is tell us uh, about investor sentiment and the footprints of investors, okay? Very important. The way I look at candlesticks, I'm, I'm looking at them through the lens of investor psychology, investor sentiment, and the investor footprints, okay? Now, the other thing about candlesticks is that, well, they just work, right? So the formations are very simple to spot. Once you've trained your eyes, it's all about decision-making without emotions, right? What you have when you get into these trades is you have before, before you get into the trades, you have defined risk, clear stops, and that's really more than you can ask for, or that's, you know, you can't ask for more, I should say. Um, so, if, for example, if you take a look at this person here, I chose this picture because this person, 
here is basically just walking out on this edge and has very defined risk, right? There is a point where this person's risk goes from basically zero to like 100%, right? And it's the same thing with candlesticks. When we look at these setups that we am gonna show you guys here in, in just a minute, is that we're looking at them and we're understanding that there is a point to get in and there's a very well-defined point where we have to get out will be proven wrong. And the better and, more, and visually easier a time we have at being able to pinpoint where we get, get proven wrong, the better our risk management gets and naturally the better our P&L curve gets, okay? It's like a simple process, but we have to have something that controls our emotions. And candlesticks, the way I look at them, will definitely do that, all right? So look at some, let's look at some type of, of, um, of candles, all right? I'm just gonna give you two types. Um, for one, we have the hammer candle, and the way I look at the hammer, we're just going to use it this this um, one here in the top right. They all basically show us the same thing. Let's assume we had a multi-week, maybe even a multi-month downtrend uh, on any given stock, let's say, and the stock comes into this day, right? So we've got a downtrend, stock has been falling, we come into this day. Well, what happened is that the stock opened here and it dropped lower intraday, but then something happened, it reversed up well off the lows and closed marginally higher on the day. Well, we can look at this in, in, in two ways. We can look at this in sort of the CNBC way, I say, which is we're, we're off the lows, uh, Sue, back to you, right? Which tells basically nothing. Um, or we can look at it through the lens of investor psychology. And if we understand that, let's say we had a multi-week downtrend, we come into this day, market pushes lower, something happens down here, the market completely reverses and closes near the day's highs. What happened is that the bears got exhausted, so sellers exhausted themselves. The last of the bulls became bearish, and the bears basically exhausted themselves. So there was no more sellers. Naturally, the market has to rise, okay? Very simple way of looking at it, but extremely powerful, A, in terms of the probability of, of trades you get, but also um, for you as a risk management exercise, right, in the way to manage markets. So let's continue and look at one more type of candle, and then we'll look at some examples. So in this case, let's uh, let's have a look at uh, at the inverse, which would be a bear setup. And this is uh, let's assume we had an uptrend here again for a few weeks, maybe it was a few months, and ultimately we come into this day. Well, the market's been rallying strongly. We come into this day, and the bulls are very giddy. They they gap this mark this market higher uh, uh, at at the open. It opens right here, but something happens in the market reverses lower. Well, again, through the lens of like see a CNBC way, you know, uh, we're off the high, Sue. Back to you. Tells us nothing. So really, what we need to do uh, is look at this through the lens of investor psychology. If we look at it through the lens of investor psychology, we are saying, well, listen, the bulls ramped this market higher after an ex ex exhaustive move higher. Something happened that these that the that the market reversed. It didn't just reverse; it fully engulfed the previous day's price action. Maybe even a few days before that as well. Maybe like multiple days. Well, what happened is the bulls got exhausted. There was no more bulls. The last of the bears became bullish, and there was no more buying pressure. The market reversed significantly. This is a significant bearish reversal. Okay, if you can pinpoint the extremes of investor emotions, you have such a great high probability to, uh, uh, way of, of, of successful trades, and it's such a simple way of doing it, but I see so few per, people do it that are not in the professional circuits. When I was work, working at J.P. Morgan and the other places, we focus on this and trying to take the other side of investor emotions, and that is really the highest probability spot that you can go in and do a trade, okay? So I'm gonna skip uh, just a couple of slides here in the interest of time. I think we have about a half hour left. And I'm just going to go right through the first example. Now, I'm going to show you this chart of the S&P 500 uh, more close up in just a second. I'll blow it up in just a second. Let me just walk you through the, um, these, these uh, three points here. So first of all, what you'll see on this following chart on the S&P is that we had a waterfall sell-off, strong sell-off, which was followed by exhaustion selling. Ultimately, we had a strong bullish reversal and a bullish continuation buying day. So let's look at this. This is the S&P 500. Um, in this case, this is the October-November period of 2014. And what happened here, if you may recall, 
was that uh, the market started selling off very strongly, and at some point in the middle part of the month, I guess it might have been like the 16th of October or something like that, you can see that the market, the, the S&P 500 in this case, once again tried to push lower. Well, it failed to do so, and it closed near the highs of the day, right? It still wasn't a down day, but it closed materially off the lows. Well, it did it again the next day, and ultimately it rallied the third day, and then it was off to the races. Well, what really happened is that the bears got exhausted. The bears tried their very best to push this market lower. They failed to do so on an intraday basis two days in a row. That scared the pants off of any remaining uh, uh, any remaining um, bears, and the market ultimately moved higher. What's what's really important for this, and what a lot of people don't do, is a you know, just taking the other side of investor emotions and respecting this, and B, not waiting for fall through buying. Okay, very, very important, and there, you have to have a process to pinpoint these types of moves consistently, and I'm going to show you guys some, some live examples as well in just a minute. Okay, so that was the S&P 500. Let's, let's look at another example here. This is the KBW Bank Index. Again, it'll blow up this chart here in just a minute, but what you see here, uh, what you'll see in the chart is we had a bottoming process, which is followed by exhaustion selling, a strong bullish reversal and ultimately bullish continuation buying, right? So uh, let's look at this. So this was actually just last last autumn, last fall, like uh, September, October period. And what you saw is that the banks uh, here, as represented by the big BKX uh, KPW Bank Index, they fell quite strongly in that August sell-off when the broader market fell. Ultimately. Uh, the market uh, recovered somewhat, but then we, it gave us a retest, or actually a marginal break below those August lows. This happened in one of the first few days of October. Well, the market didn't really uh, want to stay down there, and basically what happened is that the bears exhausted themselves. So the bears tried their very best to one more time push this market below those August lows, but look what happened on an intraday basis. Very, very strong reversal back up. Again, if we had just looked at it through the lens of, mess, of, of price action, we would have said, well, we're off the lows. It's not the same from a risk management perspective. It doesn't register the same way in your head. If you realize that what happened here is that the bears tried their very best to, to push the market lower, failed to do so, there were no more sellers left, and the very next day we had a follow-through buying day, you will have a much easier time buying this market after this type of formation, right? And that's what I've seen. I also see it, saw this in the professional circuit. I see it in, 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 on any level of investors and traders. People can't follow their systems because they don't have a visual enough, visually uh, simple enough representation of what's happening. And particularly if they don't have anything to back it up, in this case we're using investor psychology to back it up, uh, they can't, they have a hard time uh, sticking to, the, to, to the, the, the signals they get. Let's look at another example. This is the Spider Gold Trust, the GLD. Again, we'll look at the close-up chart in just a minute. Uh, but what you saw here is basically a, a topping process followed by an exhaustion buying move a strong bearish reversal and ultimate follow through, uh, ultimately follow through selling. So this is the GLD. I'm sure everyone here or has at least heard of the GLD, the gold ETF. And what you saw here, we had a, a quite a nice lift off those August lows last year. The market then rallied very strongly into the middle part of October and actually gave us a bearish reversal up here already. But the real obvious one, and this is maybe a quick, a quick sort of point to make here, I find a lot of people that use candlesticks or anything for that matter, they try to take every single signal. You don't have to do that. You only have to take the best signals, right? So that's another thing I've learned working at, at you know, on the sell side and the buy side for, for, uh, for a long, long time uh, and, and having been in this business for nearly 20 years, you don't have to take every trade. Only take the best ones. And a lot of times if you do that, you'll have an easier time respecting the the um, respecting your system, respecting your approach, and if you th then on top of that have a very visually clear representation of what's taking place, such as what we're doing here with candlesticks, you have a real winning formula. So what happened here in the GLD again? It rallied very strongly in this August through mid October period, um, then started topping out, and on this day, which I guess was one of the last few trading days of November, it tried very hard to rally one more time. It rallied, but on an intraday basis, reversed very strongly, closing the day actually lower on the day. A huge bearish engulfing reversal candle, right? Now, again, we can look at this through the lens of price action, which tells us little. Look at the lens of rest psychology. What happened? The bulls, after having a, a multi-month run, got exhausted, 
cooled off a little bit, tried one more time their very best to maybe even get back to those highs up here, failed miserably on an interday basis, the market reversed lower, fall through selling the very next day, and the market fell apart, right? Again, look at it through the lens of investment psychology, guys, and you have a much higher probability of becoming a successful investor and, and, and trader. I'm going to skip this example here in the interest of time, but I want you guys to write this down. There's three steps to the trade, and again, this is something I learned um, throughout my career working at buy and sell side, and that's how I manage money right now. Step number one, okay, really important, and a lot of people don't do this because they're somewhat scared of it. You don't have to become an economist, or in fact, if you do, it's probably going to do you more harm than, than good for this business, and you don't have to read the Wall Street Journal from front to back every day. In fact, I, you know, I would never read it for, for, for that perspective, but um, what you have to have is some basic idea of where we are in terms of the market structure, and the market structure a lot of times is going to mean A, um, where are we in terms of interest rate policy, so monetary policy, uh, maybe what's the political environment look like, and also, of course, where we are in the economic cycle, right? So like right now, for example, we are kind of in no man's land, to be honest with you, in terms of monetary policy. We're more in a hawkish period than a dovish period, arguably, but we're kind of in no man's land, right, as far as the Fed goes. In terms of the economic cycle, well, we're very late in an in, 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 in expansion cycle. In fact, we're, we've actually had economic growth uh, slow in rate of change terms for the past three quarters. Same thing for um, corporate profits. So that's where we are right now. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Okay. Step two, you then make sure once you have a basic idea of where we are, you you, for the most part, try to trade with the trend, okay? There's no, I have no problem trading against the trend, but you have an easier time over time making money trading with the trend. So make sure you find the setups you find at the margin for the, are more in favor of the, of the broader trend than against it, right? Um, and step number three, very important, um, make sure you then look for those bullish and bearish reversals that we just talked about. Now, you can, you can reverse engineer this entire process, by starting with this, if you just, let's say you come across a strong bullish or bearish reversal, uh, like for example, I'm looking at it in WHR in the Whirlpool. We'll look at this example in, in just a minute, okay? Um, but let's say you come across a, a real good bullish or bearish reversal, like we looked at before through the lens of Mesa psychology. You understand that let's say the the buyers got exhausted and you have a bearish setup. Well, then make sure it fits into step number two for the most part, uh, and of course that step number two still fits into step number one. Okay, so you can reverse engineer. So just make sure you write this down, please. Um, take a picture of it on your phone if you have to. But this is really, really important stuff. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, let me see here. I need to quickly bring up this chat window here so we can actually see. Perfect. Okay. Now, let's look at these charts we just looked at before and look at them uh, stepping, taking a step back and zooming out a little bit. So remember the first chart before I show you the S&P 500. Well, let's walk through these three steps. Um, when that uh, dip occurred or that sell-off occurred last October, uh, what happened was that the S&P 500 actually had bounced right into this 2011 support line. I remember when October 2014, when the market dipped, I got a lot of questions. My phone was ringing off the hook on, on those two days when the market just literally was about to collapse um, and then reversed. And I got a lot of calls from, from hedge funds around the world. I remember several from San Francisco were freaking out. And they were asking me if they should just you know liquidate their portfolios. I said, listen, guys, let's wait it out where we are at the end of the day, maybe at the end of the week, and then make a decision. And Sure enough, we had very, very strong um, bullish reversals take place right here at the 2011 support line, right? Uh, at the time, we were still very much in the broader structure, with market structure which, where the Fed was supportive, so we still have supportive monetary policy, and again, the markets was going higher. So if you have this one, two, three step process, buying the 2014 bullish reversal that we had here was a no-brainer, and you would have made a lot of money. We did so, we did it for clients, did it for subscribers, and it was a wonderful time. Right. Let's look at the KBW Bank Index. Again, this was just last autumn, last fall. And what we had here was uh, the banks sell off quite hard in, in the August period, uh, like, we, like I said, like the broader market. And it all came into a big horizontal support area on a, on a weekly, multi-year basis. Well, again, what happened is the banks at the time actually started to rally or were, were ready to rally because the market 
uh, the Fed was signaling something hawkish, which ultimately in December they did, and they raised uh, rates by a quarter, uh, a quarter uh, or a percentage point of a percentage point, right? So if you had this process in place, understood, um, you know where we, why, why this took, why the, the the banks were about to rally from a, from a, a big picture perspective. Understood that this took place at a multi-year support line, and three, and saw the bullish reversal take place on a weekly basis, where the bears got exhausted exactly where there was a lot of support. You would have had a, an easy time to buy this, and would have made real nice money uh, with the banks for a number of weeks. Okay, let's look at the gold uh, uh, trade we looked at for the GLD. Now, this is a trade that again occurred last um, October, and. That bearish reversal I showed you guys represents this blue bubble here. Now notice where this blue bubble is taking place. It's taking place right at the multi-year diagonal resistance line. If you would have seen that bearish reversal take place right at, um, right at, the, at, the, at this area on the weekly chart as well as on the daily chart, you would have had a, a much higher probability of actually getting in this trade. And again, if you would have respected what it meant from an investor psychology perspective, which is what uh, we showed you before, and we'll look at more examples in just a second, um, then you would have had an easy time to get into this trade. We did, it was a great trade, and uh, you know, and that's that. So we said we can skip this HPQ example. I wanna quickly go through uh, the options uh, setup that I, I said before as a bonus I would show you guys. And then we'll do a lot more examples. I wanna go through uh, examples I, I'm currently looking at, and I wanna get your tickers as well in just a minute. But basically, my favorite option strategy is as follows, and I've traded options in uh, just about any instrument out there that has options, or at least liquid options, and um, basically, the highest probability trade is really, as far as equities go, in stocks that are called, called stocks that are, that are taking a, an orderly ascent into a vertical ascent, right? You can look at the Teslas, or let's say Amazon.com last year was one of those, where a stock that went had an orderly multi-year uptrend went vertical. Well, what happens when that takes place, and once you come across a bearish reversal, and again, I'll show you guys more in just a second, um, what happens then is that, uh, is that implied volatility actually tends to rise, right? And this can be a, a vertical ascent or a vertical decline, right? Uh, what happens is implied volatility inclines, and you can actually go out and sell far out of the money call or put spreads if, if, it's, a, if it's a sell-off for hugely juicy profit. Okay, where you actually make money 80, 90 percent of the time. So, you know, it's all about the rate of change and then respecting what the what the market's telling us in terms of these bullish and bearish reversals that we just went through before. Okay, so that's that's that. And, and quick summary on this part, and then I want to do a lot more examples here. Candles show us investor footprints and emotions. So we have to have a straightforward and repeatable process because that is the key to consistent profits uh, as a trader. And investors, my three-prong trading process is as such. You have got to understand the market structure and environment. Again, you don't have to be an economist. In fact, if you do, I think it does you more harm than good. But you have to have a basic understanding of where we are. Most people that try to sell you some sort of program or technical analysis thing don't focus on that. And I think that's why a lot of things don't work. But you have to have an understanding of the broader picture. Number two, make sure you scan for technically sound stocks or commodities, whatever, in this broader trend that supports point number one. And three, you use a one, two, three. Uh, bullish bearish reversal signals. Okay, so that's that. Let's do a couple of examples, and I, I would love to take a couple of stocks from you guys if you uh, want me to go through a couple here right now. I'll show you quickly. We've had some wonderful trades, for example, in Facebook already this year. Okay, so um, let's look at Facebook real quick. So we had, for example, strong bullish reversal and bearish reversal take place in Facebook, right? So the most recently. Uh, one took place here uh, on the 20th of January. Look what happened. 200-day moving average is this red line, by the way. And then I have the 50-day in yellow and the 100-day in blue. So what happened here is that the Facebook fell down uh, into January lows. And ultimately, while the market been, had been dropping for a couple of weeks here, it came into, into this day where it pierced below the 200-day moving average and rallied higher, actually closed very much off the lows of the, of the day. Now, again, what happened in terms of price action is that we just closed off the lows. If we think about the lens of rest and psychology, however, you'd understand that what actually happened is that the bears got completely exhausted and 
the bears couldn't keep the market lower. They couldn't eat, they couldn't keep it below the 200-day moving average, which is another little layer of, of, of analysis here. But very importantly, two days later, we had a follow-through buying day, and it was off to the races, right? Same thing happening at the top here, right? The market rallied. I guess this, this was after earnings. It came in here, tried to push higher one more time. The bulls fa fa failed to keep this market higher. The very next day, follow-through selling, okay? and it was off to the races lower. We did it again over here. Uh, let's see, we did it again over here, okay? And actually, I just opened an out of money call spread this morning in full disclosure, okay? Like July paper, so a uh, bit of a different one. Another one is Nike, okay? If you look at Nike, for example, uh, one of the more beautiful bearish reversals I've seen in a long time, but again, let's look at the lens of investor psychology. Well, what happened in Nike here, and let's, oopsie, that's not what I want to open. If we look at this uh, with a plain white chart. So what happened in Nike here is that this stock rallied higher very strongly uh, in 2015. And then it started sort of stalling out. It couldn't go higher anymore. Um, it started stalling in October, then again in November. And then it tried to push above resistance on this day. I think it was the 23rd of December. For, yeah, exactly. 23rd of December, if I remember correctly. And what happened is that uh, Nike tried its very best, the bulls tried their very best to push this market higher, failed miserably to keep it up there, a huge bearish reversal, huge bearish reversal, no more buyers were left up here, and the very next day we had confirmation selling, right? Are you guys starting to see how this is coming together? It's really important to look at stuff through the lens of best psychology because you can, you have such a higher probability, uh, uh, such a high probability of sticking to your to your system if you look at it that way that if you just look at it the lens of price action. This has been proven empirically and, and through psych, psych, psychology studies we've done. That's the way you want to look at the markets using candlesticks. All right. So so those those are a couple of examples there uh, that people also brought up. So let's just quickly and I want to take more examples. Uh, go to more examples. Just then take more questions. But Albert Einstein once said that the definition of insanity is repeating the same behaviors but expecting a different outcome, right? And when it comes to trading, we really have to have a plan. And plan, uh, and a plan starts with knowledge. And if knowledge is what you seek, I would like to offer you guys my ultimate candlestick boot camp, which very much focuses on this institutional three-pronged trading approach that I just went through and give you a preview of. It's all about low stress, high probability swing trading uh, or you know, multi-day, multi-week, uh, multi-month holding period type of stuff. It's all about nailing reversal by correctly reading investor sentiment and emotions using the candlesticks and more, right? So um, what the course is, is an 11-part recorded video series, okay, an 11-part recorded video series um, that you get a, a log into. I also throw in a 30-page um, ebook with beautiful charts just like the ones we went through. Um, it's a 30-page ebook that also serves as a course guide. So um, all that is just $97, and you can get that at uh, thestudytrader.com slash now. And I'm trying to think of how to uh, type this into the, uh, uh, into the um, chat box here. But um, again, www.thestudytrader.com slash now is where you can pick that up. Um, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, I don't really want you to set 97 bucks. Uh, but a lot of people, uh, have, tons of people, are finding this to be a real, uh, a real you know, light bulb moment for them. Um, I don't think this course is for someone who can't be patient and disciplined in their approach. Um, I also don't think this is for someone who just needs someone to feed them a trade every single day. Um, and can't make their own trading decisions. So if that's you, and you're impatient, and you you know you don't want to follow a, a discipline approach, it's probably not for you. Uh, but this course is for people who want to actually learn how to fish. Uh, they want to you know learn how to reach financial independence. Um, and it's really for self-disciplined, uh, disciplined self-starters, I should say, who can follow a very straightforward three-pronged. Uh, rules-based trading approach. So uh, the studytrader.com slash now is where you can pick that up. Um, in the course also, and by the way, here's a quote from Brian Rickwalski. He was already a professional trader and he took this course and he has dramatically improved this. It's been a real pleasure watching him um, just literally you know, go lights out 
uh, within, within weeks after taking the course because he started to finally look at stuff uh, through the lens of investor psychology. Um, so this course is all about learning my institutional three-punk trading approach. You can learn all uh, variations of the bullish and bearish reversals, but very straightforward. You're not going to have to learn hundreds of candlestick patterns like some other people teach you because it just doesn't matter. Okay, I promise you it doesn't matter. If you look out the lens of investor psychology, you'll see that those patterns, uh, for the most part, tell you the same thing, and you have to look for the ones that actually matter. Okay, um, you're also going to learn about my uh, uh, famous rocket launch and gravity pull setups. In the course, you also learn multi-time frame analysis and all about the confluence zones. Okay, very, very important, multi-time frame analysis and confluence zones. Again, you can go to thestudytrader.com slash now and pick up uh, that 11-part video course and the 30-page ebook. It's just a one-time payment, just 97 bucks. Um, that's it. Also, you can learn about sideways channel breakouts, wedge and flag pattern breakouts, uh, you know, trending gaps. Resistance support lines, moving averages, momentum oscillators, and Fibonacci retracements, all that stuff, not the way a lot of people teach it to you, because a lot of people teach it through more through the lens of an academic exercise. I teach it to you the way I've learned, the way I apply it, the way I used it on the sell side, on the JP Morgan, and the buy side, um, and how the stuff is actually supposed to be used. So um, that's, of course, you also can learn to set your stops, so, uh, which is basically a sound risk management strategy. You can learn a little bit uh, about the mental aspect of trading, money management. Um, again, it's studytrader.com. Um, all right, Steiner saying is buying. Go ahead. <laughs> Sounds great. Looking forward to have you guys all uh, on board. Meantime, the market looks like it's deteriorating a little bit here, if I'm not entirely mistaken, which, one, which gets me to a couple of live setups I want to get to. Okay? So I want to show you guys right now, um, uh, you know, I actually, and by the way, this, this chart right here is not real time. Okay? Uh, this is a 20 minute delay, this chart uh, on purpose, so I don't actually follow the market while I give a presentation. <laughs> um, uh, but basically, what I want to show you guys today is, um, is one setup that, I ha that I'm, I've got on right now, which is in Whirlpool. Okay? And Whirlpool, uh, if you look at it specific on the weekly uh, chart, is, is one that's giving us a bearish reversal right now uh, in the uh, on, on, on the weekly chart. So let me just quickly make the plain white chart. And what you can see here is uh, what's happening right now. Okay, so you can see uh, this stock rallied very strongly. It was much overbought. In fact, it's MACD. If anyone uses the basic MACD momentum oscillator, reached its all-time highest ever overbought reading on the daily chart ever. Like this, and this stock's been around for a while. Ever last week. Okay, that's a long time. Now, what happened? Let's go through our bearish reversal to the lens of investor psychology. What happened is last week, and the stock, by the way, had earnings, uh, I guess, earlier this week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, stock rallied and, uh, you know, off the February, January, February lows and came into this last week. Rally, tried to rally one more time last week, failed miserably, and this week is, is, is faltering apart. Now, this week is not yet over, right? But if this week closes anywhere near where it is right now, you have a strong strongly convincing bearish reversal on a weekly uh, on a weekly basis. Now again, through the lens of, pri of price action, this doesn't tell you that much. Look at the lens of investor psychology. What's happening? The bulls got exhausted up here. They tried one more time to push the market higher, failed to do so. Confirmation selling week so far this week. So that's what we're looking at there. Uh, also, uh, we are um, in DHI, Dr. Horton, okay, uh, a home builder. Now this stock has bearish reversal taking place right now, both on his daily and its weekly chart. Very nice. Look what happened here, and I'm just going to quickly give you uh, the daily chart here. What you saw here is that Horton rallied very strongly, came into this day late last week, I guess it was, and you can see the stock tried its very best to push high one more time, failed to do so, and is following through today, down 3% today. Our subscribers are loving it, and people who've taken this course understand this stuff and are making money hand over fist being patient, waiting for these types of setups to, to take place, right? So let's look at this on a weekly basis. So let's go with a plain white chart and go with a weekly basis. Um, and uh, you'll see uh, here, same thing on a weekly basis, very strong rally, failed to push higher. Uh, bulls lost complete control of the ball. They exhausted it each themselves, and today, this week so far, a follow through. Uh, selling week. Someone wanted to know about Netflix. And by the way, guys, don't forget about the course. Again, it's an 11-part recorded video series. It's just 97 bucks one time. You get a login. I just recorded it um, 
uh, a few uh, a few months ago, uh, brand new. So uh, so it's all brand new. You get a 30-page course ebook as well with it, with beautiful charts like the ones I'm, sh I'm showing you here. Um, it's at thestudytrainer.com slash now. Uh, love to have you guys on board there. Uh, Netflix. Uh, someone wants to know about Netflix. And in full disclosure, I just yesterday f uh, closed a short position that we had in Netflix because we had a bearish reversal take place, and this is the, one of the bearish reversals um, is uh, it, 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 that you'll learn in the course as well. John's asking, yeah. So John's asking, do I like you know long uh, uh, upper and lower shadows? Uh, that's one of the criteria, John. John's referring to like the trade before. Uh, or the, the example for and say like DHI. It's just one of the things that we focus on. There has to be more than that, you know, but you learn all about it in the course. You learn about confluent zones, you know, but again, you have to look at the lens of investor psychology and it just makes your life so much easier. Like, I mean, look, just, just I mean, if you want to just only focus on long tails, look at these bearish reversals here, these, you know, and here you, you have so many trades set up on a, on a daily basis in this case, okay? Um, yeah, so Tim's saying, are you are you saying that the market's reversed when the last buyer uh, buys? Not necessarily right away, but it's a pretty darn good indication. And again, you know, you can look at in sentiment readings, but you but why look at sentiment? Well, you can look at those as well, and we do as well. But it's all in the price. The price represents it, right? When bulls get exhausted, look look at for example down here. I mean, you can look at the broader market that the January loss. Look what happened down here. This is DHI, but we can look at the S&P. And I've only got like I think two minutes left. Um, Look what happened down here. Like this is the weekly base. Look how the bears got completely exhausted. Now again, if you look at this through the lens of price action, guys, you'd say, okay, well, yeah, we're off the lows and blah blah blah. But what really happened is that the bears got completely exhausted here, uh, it, it, both in, in January, uh, in the January uh, mid January week, and again in the early uh, February week. And this happened on a daily basis as well, by the way, right? But these, this is now a weekly chart, just whatever, just to show you. Yeah, John's asking the same psychology of futures and forex. Absolutely, you, you know this stuff doesn't lie. So, um, all right, guys, listen. I think I have literally like less than a minute left. Um, www.thestudytrader.com/slash/now. It's just ninety-seven bucks and eleven-part uh, recorded video series and a thirty-course ebook. You learned all about this and much, much more. Uh, you know, do yourself a favor, pick up your copy there. And uh, you know, become a more consistently profitable trader with an easier process and, and more importantly, a repeatable process, which is really what this is all about.